Okay, in this video, we are going to learn how to set up the Windows Deployment Service, abbreviated as WDS. If you're new at this, I want to make sure you understand one thing very clearly. This method is not going to allow you to create portable media like flash drives or DVDs. Instead, once it is installed, it will listen for computers that have PXE boot turned on. PXE boot, which means pre-boot execution environment, can be set in your client's computer's BIOS, but it is often turned on by default. Once WDS detects a PXE boot client machine, it will offer a press F12 option to your client machine's display. If you press it, the installation will begin. If you ignore it, the client system will boot in its normal way and WDS will be ignored. You can configure WDS to use an Active Directory or LDAP, but that is beyond the scope of this tutorial. Okay, with that said, let us begin. Okay, now we're going to kick into gear the Windows Deployment Services tools. Start with uh, clicking on the Server Manager dashboard. The Server Manager, in fact, I'm going to right click on that and pin it to the taskbar as well. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to come up to Manage and Add Roles and Features. For these first few windows, we're just going to click Next, Next, and Next until we get down to Server Roles, until you get down to Windows Deployment Services. And that's going to pop this up automatically. Click on Add Features, then click Next, which includes, of course, Windows Deployment Services we were already at and then next again and next one more time these two should be checked click next again and this is all uh, default just go ahead and click install okay when that's finished that's going to take about three or four minutes go ahead and hit close and we'll go ahead and close the server manager and we will open the windows deployment services I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other and pin that to the taskbar. Okay, with that open, click on servers. You'll see something like this here. It, it dynamically names your server. Choose configure server. Okay, for this, just go with the default. Um, every computer has a DHCP server so that we get a dynamic IP address. Uh, and we're going to do this as a standalone server, so no outside Active Directory dependencies. Go ahead and click Next. This is actually where your virtual machine images, where your images are going to live, the actual images you end up creating that are going to be installed on your Windows computers. By default, it's here. You could put it anywhere, including a network share. I'm going to leave that as a default. Now, this warning does have a value. It's reminding you that you're going to be storing these images on the C drive of the server, which you kind of ultimately wouldn't want to do because the C drive on the server would be a moving operating system, and you really want the images to be on a hard drive that has no activity at all. So for production purposes, it would make sense to attach another drive to this virtual machine. But since this server is only going to be used for this purpose. It's not an Active Directory server and a variety of other things. We're going to just leave that as it is. Okay, here we're going to respond to all client computers. We are not going to worry about uh, requiring administrative approval. That will allow anybody in the network to get to us, as well as getting to the images over the network. All right, this is the tail end of the deployment services edition and we're going to uncheck this add images to the server because we don't have any images to add. We're going to make this long name a little bit easier to digest. Right click, choose system and rename this PC. And in my case I'm just going to call it CMWDS for CompuMatters uh, Windows Deployment Services. We'll hit next and it will ask me to restart the computer. And that's fine. No particular reason. Okay, we'll log back in. 
we can take a look at system and we'll see our new server our new name has taken effect and we go cmwds that's and if we open up windows deployment services we see that same naming convention has applied here now you remember during setup i suggested that you create a shared folder so that you could interact with your host machine i want to show you what happens there if i click on this file explorer we look on uh, this pc we notice a shared folder right here so here's my host machine it's a folder off of my host machine i can minimize this it'll make it more obvious and i'm just going to create a file in my host machine called test And if we refresh this over here, you see it appears within the virtual machine. So we've got a way of moving things back and forth. All right, next we need to get a Windows 10 ISO. We're going to go to this page and download the tool for creating Windows 10 installation media and run that. Okay, we'll accept the license naturally. Okay, and right here we're going to create the installation media, which will be the ISO. And we'll select that right there. We're going to drop this into that shared folder. All right, it finishes with this. I'll hit finish. And now with a little luck in my shared folder, the virtual machine shared folder, we have the Windows ISO. And we also have this Windows ISO in our shared folder within the virtual machine. I'm going to turn on extensions here. I see the extensions not showing. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to close this and open up the deployment server or deployment services, more accurately. <coughs> okay, so we noticed when we try to open up the Windows ISO file, we get hit with uh, some unable to mount. Okay, problem mounting the file is what we get hit with. So we need to get access to the interior of that. I'm surprised Windows didn't open it up as though it were a compressed file. That's how I expected it to happen. Um, but it doesn't give us an option for that. So I've downloaded an installer uh, from Ninite that includes the 7-zip and Chrome. If you're not familiar with Ninite, ninite.com is a great site where you can go grab a bunch of different programs that you might want to install and create a single installer for them so it runs in the background and gets them installed. I just picked a couple of them here. That'll allow me to drill down inside this ISO and get the files that I need access to. Okay, the installation process is done. I've deleted the files that we didn't need in that folder. And now if I right click, I can just open it directly with 7-zip. And that drills down into the archive the way I wanted it to. And we're going to open up the support folder, excuse me, the sources folder. And we're looking for two files in here. One is called the boot WIM file right there. Go ahead and grab that. Pull it out and deposit it in that remote install folder for now. And the other one is going to be the install ESD. There we are. Can't miss it really. It's a, the big 4 gigabyte file. Everything else is small by comparison. Drag that out of there and put it in the remote install folder also. And that's what you end up with. I'm going to rename this install ESD so that I know what day I downloaded this image in case I do this again down the road, I know which is the newer version. Okay, now I'd like you to go to the C drive and create a new folder called WIM, which is where your WIM files are gonna end up staying. We'll talk about those later. But for now, I'd like you to come back to this remote install folder and right click cut that boot WIM, and go ahead and put that over in the WIM folder. Okay, next we're going to open PowerShell. I am going to run that as administrator just to be on the safe side. 
we're going to want to change directories into the remote install directory. Okay, we're in PC remote install. Now what we want to do next is get the information on what's inside this ESD file. Because uh, ultimately we want to get their, um, the files extracted from here. This shows us um, the command. So you want to type that verbatim. Uh, the Win10 2021, that's going to be your own file name, whatever you have. It's right here in the same. In fact, let me just go ahead and break out of that. Uh, you see in my case, that's the name of the file. And so I'm going to run this here, and it's going to tell me what's inside of that file. And here you see Windows 10 Home, uh, Education, and Pro. And what you're going to need to pay attention to is the nomenclature. For the index so this is index one for home index six for pro which is really the only two we're going to fool with okay and now for the command to extract the wim files that's w i m as in mary out of that esd the individual wim files that we need and they are going to be extracted to the wim directory that we created earlier Okay, so you need to be in the remote install directory and then run this command. DISM followed by forward slash export image. And just go ahead and I'm going to just highlight this whole thing for you. The things you need to pay attention to, this file name, of course, is the file name in the remote install directory that you've uh, extracted from the ISO earlier. The source index one tells us that it's the Windows Home that we want to go ahead and get a WIM file uh, extracted for. We'll, we'll deal with Pro uh, next. The destination image file is going to be put in that C WIM folder that we created earlier. And we're going to name it, uh, and you can name it anything you want. Um, I'm going to name it Win 10 home and again uh, today's date, followed by a forward slash compress uh, colon max space forward slash check integrity. With that done, I'm going to hit enter. And it begins exporting the image. And this is your confirmation that things are going according to plan. I thought this might be of interest to you. It's at 5% now, crunching along. Um, you can see that the DISM uh, process takes a pretty good chunk of the CPU away. I've seen that as high as the upper 60s, so <clears throat> if the thought has occurred to you, maybe you can run a couple of these windows simultaneously and extract both the Home and Pro WIM file at the same time you're probably going to need to bump your CPU for the VM up a little bit. This process is probably going to take a solid 45 minutes, uh, maybe more. So you may as well go do something while you're waiting. Okay, that eventually finished. We see the operation completed successfully. Okay, we're going to run the very same command. Uh, on Pro that we did for Home with just a couple of small exceptions. One, the file name that's going to be deposited in the WIM folder. We're going to put Pro in there instead of Home, and the source index will be 6, which is what coincided based on our previous info command with Pro. And we'll go ahead and hit Enter to kick that off. And we'll be back in 45 minutes. While we're waiting for that, uh, let me show you, this is the WIM folder uh, that we're extracting these files to. You can see that uh, you know, you've got four gigabytes on the home and the Pro is of course working right now. So things are happening according to plan, it just takes a while. Okay, as you can see here, the operation completed successfully. The Pro version is uh, extracted and if we look in the WIM folders we can see these two files for Home and Pro are done. That's the end of this video so we'll uh, we'll catch you on the next one and thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.